Hello, everybody. It's Star Trek Tuesday. That means it is time for the main viewer. It's your lucky day. There's oh. another Tuesday this week. What a what? deal. <laughs> I know. I know. So we're going to be talking about so many great things. Uh, Nacelle Network has some great news, and we've got somebody that might know a little something about it. We've got Strange News World. Uh, does that work? No. Strange New Worlds Crazy. News. Uh, there's Picard stuff. We have so much to talk to you about, everybody. We have a very special guest, first and foremost, number one best-selling author, Peter Holmstrom is here. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for having me. But what did he write? Well, we'll talk about that in just a bit, but it's this amazing book wow. that drops oh, I want one. literally today. <laughs> it literally drops today. Watch. <laughs> oh my gosh i should improvise oh, um, are dropping everywhere <laughs> uh melissa longo melissa longo is here wearing her favorite neelix and chill shirt uh you can of course get that shirt at the link below at star trek and chill hi melissa Hi, that's good. <laughs> uh, wow, Dr. Muhammad Noor is also wearing a special shirt that you can get at the Introverted Republic made by Melissa, actually. There you go. <laughs> I suppose you'll be on the main viewer and love Melissa's wares. Good stuff. Awesome. And so Dr. Much. Anne Marie Siegel is here, the resident web crawler and walking exclamation point. But who is she wearing? She's oh wearing, God, I'm wearing her favorite. Star Trek and Chill, Joan. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's on Star Trek and Chill, and I have two of them in Riza and Riza and Chill because they're so cute with Picard, plus it's Picard season. So beautiful. Yeah, uh, get those at the link below, of course. All right. Oh, my name is Ryan T. Husk. I'm just wearing a shirt. Me and Peter are cool shirt. in solidarity here. <laughs> <laughs> uh all right. Well, let's uh just get into this week's news. Actually. Peter, do you just want to start and tell everybody about the book that you've got? Because this thing is gigantic and it's full of tons of words. Yes, almost it is. 400 pages. Uh, <laughs> almost 400 pages. Yeah. So uh, wow. the book the book is called uh, The Center Seat, uh, 55 Years of Star Trek. It's a, it's a companion book to the documentary series that the Nacelle Company put out uh, on the History Channel, um, October of 2021, I guess, about 18 months ago. Um, and this is a uh, expansion of that. So it's like taking a lot of those interviews and, and giving them their full breadth of, of space and and crafting the story of Star, Star Trek in, in a very full form. And uh, um, and it's fantastic. We have some really great interviews in there. And I throw in some witty anecdotes at times. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Ooh, I didn't catch any of those yet. I'll look a little deeper. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about the book a little bit more. Everybody at home. A little later but just so you know this is something you could get literally anywhere you can get it on amazon right uh it's a number one best selling we didn't make that up it's actually a, a factual statement <laughs> um but yeah i got a lot of questions about this thing a little later um where shall we start muhammad i was thinking we start by talking more about the book let's talk a little bit more about this book <laughs> So actually, I have a question for you, Peter, about it. I saw yeah. in the in the description on Amazon, it said uh, two interesting factoids about this book, which was, number one, that it, it has what appears to be the last full interview with Leonard Nimoy. And yep. the other one is that it has the only official interview with Kirstie Alley about her work wow. on Star Trek. Wow. Yeah. Um, you know, the Leonard Nimoy one is fantastic. The Nacelle people recorded it, I, th I think, the year that he, he passed. Um and it was very interesting. He talks a lot about his kind of early days as as a struggling actor. I mean, I think that's so fascinating too about Leonard Nimoy is that he wasn't just like this, you know, I don't know, born into Hollywood type or, you know, came to fame at 18 or something. Like he really worked for years and and it was, I think about 15 years in, in the industry before he got the role of Spock. And, and even that wasn't a guarantee that it was going to be the, you know, massive hit <laughs> that it was. Um, so that was really fascinating. Um, and, and then, yeah, the Kirstie Alley one was also very good. I think, you know, she's a little more represented in the documentary series. Um, but, uh, her interview was, was very strong, very good. And, uh, unfortunately, yeah, it was ended up being the, uh, I believe the last interview she did actually, but, um, wow. but, uh, yeah, it's, um, 
Those are two great stuff. I mean, we're able to get a lot of interviews too that a lot of people haven't really talked much about in the past either. Um, not just from them, but also we talk about uh, Lucille Ball's and uh, you know involvement with the mm-hmm. Star Trek uh, universe, which you know was always. I feel like a lot of us always kind of like vaguely knew it. It's like we saw at the end of the credits, like oh, Desi Lou, that's Lucille Ball's company <laughs> or whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, the book, it's fun to actually get into that and like talk more about. Um, just what that meant, what that was all about, and and why that was so instrumental in in getting Star Trek and uh, getting us to all be here today. Which is mm-hmm. so the book's uh, organized into chapters that, that sort of fit the eras. There's like the the pre-Trek era, which includes Desi Lu and the pilot, things like that. Then TOS animated series, movies. But then it's interesting you split Next Generation into two. Result, well, it deserves work? two chapters that's why <laughs> yeah that's what i was gonna ask <laughs> <laughs> no no i'm kidding um i mean you know purely because just the the chapter that i had for uh well i mean there's a few things like one the journey to get to the next generation was more than there's a bit of stuff about that too so you're talking not just about the development of the next generation but also the uh the failed attempt to get the next generation back going at fox which happened before uh the Mm. gene roddenberry stuff that we have now um so there's a bit about that and i I mean i did the same thing too with the original series um you know we have like the the lucille ball and then the uh two pilots and then we have the series after that um uh so yeah that's that's kind of why i also like the next generation there's such uh, and we all talk about this so much but there's such a division between season one and two and then season three through seven like just tonally and aesthetically and you know script wise things like that so it just felt felt like it's a good kind of you know cutting off point and uh way to, mm-hmm. to do two chapters so speaking of cutting mm-hmm. off point it ends with enterprise i believe right yes it do, does. Yeah. Do, do you anticipate a, a later book where you pick up with uh, the jj abrams movies and then the current iterations of trek i i mean i would love to yeah i mean it's um I, I feel like in a way we need a bit more distance. You know, I know the book says 55 years of Star Trek, but it's it kind of goes from like uh, inception up through the end of the Berman era. So kind of in, end of 2005. Um, and, uh, you know, I think in a way we do need a bit more distance just to let people feel more comfortable, I guess, talking about, about the time and about the situations and things like that. Because um, right now, I mean, you know, everyone's steeped in it. They're working on them. Yeah. They want to, you know, um, so stuff like that but you know someday yeah that'd be fantastic no it's a fair point too because i mean now we're you know if, if more than 15 years out from the end of enterprise so we actually have a sense yeah. of what the impact of enterprise is whereas you know the other series are just going right now so yeah, that's yeah. absolutely fair point i think it's True. it's what's really great about the or so um to be clear to, to viewers out there this is an oral history book so it's comprised of a lot of interviews from people and i think what's so wonderful about getting interviews from the you know, people that worked on Deep Space Nine or Next Generation or whatever is like, they're now able to to talk about stuff, not only with, <laughs> thank you, Ryan, for pointing that over. Um, well, uh, only... I just want to show, let me spotlight. So for example, it'll say who, you know, who's speaking here, you know, like Brandon Braga says, or there's Jerry Taylor. Uh, what's, what's this one? Uh, Michael Okuda. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, and uh the Jerry Taylor interview was fantastic. I mean, that was because she's she's done a couple of things since then, but like she's mostly just been chilling with retirement for the last uh, twenty years or so, as as we all live in living her best life. But um, mm-hmm. so the fact that they were able to get her and uh, have a very open conversation about it was was really fantastic. Um, I lost my train of oh, it was just because like the the ability to talk with a certain amount of hindsight, not just about like what the show meant making it but also like what the show has meant to people over the the years i think it's so powerful i mean i i think we all had the experience to a degree of like watching uh stuff in the in the 90s and 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 2000s and it's like this is star trek we love it but we didn't really think i don't know for me i didn't think much more about it beyond just like this is great and yet now we know so much like people t- have talked a great length about how significant you know deep space nine was and you know having a, a black single father lead and and voyager for having a strong female character as as uh, as your lead in the show and it's like that stuff's all fantastic and and fascinating to talk about and and we're able to do that now and, and you know the benefit of, of hindsight mm-hmm. so it's, it's great now we've got a everybody at home. We've got a poll in the live chat. 
Uh, now, remember, this was based off of the Center Seat Star Trek documentary series. Um, and they were kind of, and so it seems like the chapters are divided similarly, right? Um, and so we've got a poll in the live chat, which is, have you watched the Center Seat Star Trek documentary series? Most or all of it, some of it, or not yet. Uh, so everybody let us know about that. Uh, the Center Seat was pretty shocking Fantastic. because... It had so many episodes to it. And I don't even yeah, think yeah. I knew that it was coming until it was just upon us. Suddenly there was just all this great Star Trek content. But Peter, did you did you basically transcribe that entire documentary series? Is that what we're looking at here? Or please tell yeah, me so that you had some kind of software do most of the work. Because that just sounds... I did not, no. <laughs> oh my God. Um, it's wow. this is all nitty gritty stuff but like the, the transcription software that's out there right now it's it's nice but it's not great and so it, in a way it's just easier and quicker just to to do it all longhand yeah incredible so. wow uh, by the way everybody uh please give this video a like uh that's like our marketing budget since we don't have a marketing budget just <laughs> the like is the the price of admission it's like you hit a hit a like button uh, if you could hit the share button and go ahead and tweet this out or post on Facebook or just tell your pals about this, that would also be great and helpful. And please make sure you're subscribed to this channel. And if you're listening in, give it a five star rating and then you get a free book. Yeah, just kidding. But I mean, <laughs> you know, you get good karma. And so uh, thank you. We appreciate all that. What's up, Muhammad? What do you got? Well, I was going to say, we should mention the, the comment you said in the very beginning when, when you were introducing Peter was true. That was not like a joke or something like that. When you say, you know, rated yep. number yes. one, because if you go to the Amazon site for some categories today, it has been rated like number one or number two. So that like, it's true. <laughs> this is great. Okay. It's true. <laughs> and how does that feel, Peter? It's got to feel pretty and incredible. It feels, it feels pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> well deserved, man. That's a lot Thank of work, you. as you just said. You. <laughs> well, let's uh, take this moment as well to say hello to everybody that right. is filing in to the live chat, like Mr. Dave Gregory, who's got a big package hey. coming his way. Uh, BL mm -hmm. Thomas Bartoldi. Uh, also, Pat B is there. Andrew Drzymski, I think that's Polish. Got to be. In Iowa, uh, Poland. It's what? Did oh, no, I that's you right. Hello. Uh, DJ Kitty Cat. Hello, Fran and Glenn Iverson. Hello, Chuck A. Linda Andereg. Chris Marshall. What's up, Jr. Pool? Uh oh, trouble is here. Oh, he says like deposited. I'll take that back. Um, thank you. <laughs> so, hey, everybody, welcome to the show. We've got a lot more to talk about and a lot of big news, but let's talk a bit more about this book and how it took you forever to type out every single <laughs> word. I did get a chance to look through it quite a bit yesterday. You had a lot of big names. You know that I skipped ahead to Deep Space Nine and looked for Ciroc's name, and it was littered all over the Deep Space Nine. <laughs> Thing. So I thought that was really cool. And a lot of similar names popped up, you know, like the, the Star Trek historians that are kind of that can kind of speak on every single yeah. uh, grouping. Was there anybody um, you personally and I know big shout out to uh, Mr. Brian Volkweiss, of course, is he on this book somewhere? There he is forwarded by Brian Volkweiss. Yeah. Can you tell us what it's like working with this fellow? Because he seems super, super fun. He, you know, he is, he's so enthusiastic about, about doing these sort of projects. I mean, this is, uh, you know, their, the, the, this book was really kind of setting up their whole publishing line for them. Like this is done in house, uh, through Nacelle. Um, and this wasn't, you know, I mean, uh, books, the publishing industry is never a guarantee anymore. You know, it's, uh, maybe it never was, but it's, um, but he, you know, he's, he didn't want to do it just because of, you know, the prospect of making money. It was because he just really loves, loves fandom, loves, loves his content. And, and it's, it's, it's really refreshing and fun, especially, I mean, we all know Hollywood, it can be, get, get a little jaded at times, but to see him and his company were just so earnest about just like, we just love this stuff. Like, we just want to talk mm -hmm. more about it. And like, and really do what we love for a living. And that's, that's really fun. 
Is. Yeah, he's okay. a super enthusiastic guy. He is like a major fan. Like he is a mm-hmm. legit fan who like collects toys and watches shows and <laughs> so re- <many> actually <laughs> Name let's this actually, company Nacelle. Yeah, Nacelle Network. Speaking of which, uh, let me see if I can find. Oh, so this, this is a follow up to virtual tre- his virtual TrekCon interview, his mm-hmm. virtual TrekCon four interview, mm-hmm. um, exactly. where he mentioned this book and then also mentioned some new lines of toys that are coming out in the future. Which happened to one of them that I was super excited about. Just happened to come out a few days ago. Everybody, get ready. The biker mice from Mars are coming again. <laughs> uh, oh, this is so cool. Uh, and it's picked up by, uh, this is comicbook.com. Comic uh, I mean, we don't need to cover a ton of it because we spoke about it quite a bit during Virtual TrekCon 4. But Muhammad, would you like to read a little bit of this? Absolutely. Earlier this year, we revealed to you that the biker mice from Mars were making a comeback. The Nacelle <laughs> Company, the studio behind hit Netflix shows like The Toys That Made Us, and the movies that made us, (laughs) landed the rights to the series with plans for not only a new toy line, but the intention of rebooting the animated show as well. The first new action figures for the Biker Mice from Mars will be here sooner than you think and are actually available for pre-order now. Head over to the Nacelle Company to secure (laughs) yours. The action figures will feature sculpts that honor the legacy of the original toys, but with updated articulation, design features, and more. The first wave will include seven-inch figures of the three main characters, Throttle, Vinny, and I guess Moto, <laughs> and it will come in their very own vintage-inspired packaging. Quote, the response to our Biker Mice acquisition was so huge that we decided to speed up the line on our schedule to meet the demand, <laughs> said the founder and CEO Brian Volkweiss. Needless to say, this is going to be a big one and not just on Mars. <laughs> Great so quote. Cute. I love that. Yeah. Aww. So that's uh, that's our buddy Brian, who's got like a thousand projects happening all at once. Uh, the one that that popped up when I first found out about this fellow for me was the toys that made us on Netflix. And I told him, and I'll tell everybody right now very quickly, it was one of those things where you're just kind of you go on Netflix real quick at the end of the night and you're like, oh, the toys that made us. And I feel like Netflix was kind of being like pushy about it, being like, here, watch this. And I'm like, nah, here, watch this. Nah, like three, four, five times. And finally, I'm like, all right, let me just hit click. And I was like, oh, they have like a He-Man one. OK, I'll put yeah, I'll watch that, you know. <laughs> and then I was just glued. I was like, because it wasn't just about toys, but it's about like the zeitgeist of that generation. It's it's. It's about so much more uh, than just the toys. But anyway, that, that's how they and got they me. They made you know? us. Yeah. <laughs> they, that's right. There you go. That Thanks. Star Trek episode, it's just like, it changes the way you even think about Star Trek merch. It's just incredible. Oh, the yeah. toys one? Yeah. It's oh. you learn so much. It's like mind blowing. Mm-hmm. Well, Ryan, you mentioned Melissa. That- Oh, I'm sorry. Please, go. I was just going to ask Melissa have Have you watched uh, the toys that made us yet? Because I know I you do. love toys. I do like toys, <laughs> but no, I haven't watched it yet. I haven't gotten around to that yet. <laughs> what were you saying, Mohammed? I was, I was just going to say you mentioned that Bri- uh, Brian Volkweiss is a is a Trek super fan, but we should also credit uh, Peter here, who's also a Trek super fan. I know your knowledge is amazing on Trek Sports Briefing Room and all your content. Oh, like you, you know your stuff, yes. Trek, like backwards and forwards. <laughs> so kudos you, to you yeah. for sharing that knowledge. Oh yeah. And, and how did you get involved with all of this? This the center seat and and. Brian Vogelweiss. Well, I mean, it, you know, in a lot of ways, it was just kind of a, uh, you know, as a lot of fans at Hollywood was, you know, it's I knew someone who knew someone and we got connected oh. up that way. Uh, uh, it was largely, a, you know, they were looking to to publish a companion book for this one. And I had done some previous work um, with uh, Mark Altman and Ed Gross on their oral history books. And uh, Mark was an executive producer on, on the Center Seat documentaries. Mm-hmm. Um, and so my name got floated out there as someone who can do stuff very quickly and get it Ooh. done in a good way. So it's, uh, so it's, uh, you know, that and, and, um, you know, they've been, they were thankfully, uh, pretty happy with the results. So it uh, came on from there. I'm glad you name checked Mark because, 
uh, when we first wanted to uh, talk with him and uh, interview him, that is uh, Brian Volk Weiss, I uh, emailed Mark A. Altman, great guy, and was like, hey, do you want to come on and talk about the center seat? That he's like, he's like, here's the guy you want to talk to. And Brian Volk, like he just totally like made it super <laughs> easy. He's like, I know what you want. And it's this guy. Let me connect you. Really, really great of him. Uh, I can only imagine that's what he's like to work with. It keeps it, keeps it simple. He was very, uh, very quick to respond, friendly, intelligent, thoughtful. Uh, yeah. Big shout out to Mark A. Altman yeah. uh, and Darren. his buddy, Darren Doctorman, of course. <laughs> oh my God. They're both great. They're both great. So yeah, so they have the uh, inglorious Trek spurts, which just rolls off the tongue. But then from there, there's an offshoot that you and Lisa Klink do, which is the Trek spurts yeah. briefing room, yeah. uh, and where Love you that. just draw, you just like pellet us with knowledge bombs. It's insane, <laughs> <laughs> which kind of backs up Muhammad's point. Can you tell everybody <laughs> about that show and what the two of you do there? Yeah, so uh, Trexpert's briefing room. It's it's a podcast uh, currently uh, biweekly, and and we do um, commentary tracks to older episodes of Star Trek. Um, often we like to bring in the writers as, as much as we can. We love screenwriters, but we also bring in experts in the in the field. We've had Professor Nora on a couple of times, and uh, he's been great. Nice, and heard um, honored. <laughs> I believe I've heard his name. Uh, and we'll also have, uh, uh, you know, sometimes we'll have actors come on too. You know, we've had Tim Russ on a couple of times. We've had uh, we had Denise Crosby on once, who was who was great. Um, and you know, we just we just it's very loose conversation. We just talk about track. I mean, in a way like what we're doing right now, but it's. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun just you know and it's a thrill for me just because and i'm sure you guys feel the same way but it's like you know th these are people that had such an impact on my life and and you know my childhood and then to be just be able to chat with them about star trek it's like wow this is so cool so oh, when you guys talk about phase two especially it's like one of those gray areas where i always want to know more yeah um, me too when you get those phase two scripts and go through those i know you did one for virtual trek on three it's just Oh, it's incredible. You learned, you yeah. just like, it opened your eyes about TNG, which it's, I have uh, seen also like that. But. Yeah, it's, um, it's one of my favorite topics too, because it's like the, uh, you know, for years, it was just like, this is kind of like a, almost like a forbidden knowledge thing. <laughs> it's like, yeah. this, these are the hidden texts of the so Bible illicit. or something. It's, uh, it's, it's like, it, it, it is so a little illicit. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's um, it's just like through the podcast, I've just been able to like learn so much more about that era, and I still want to do more with that. Like, I don't. It's it's just because there's like there's like you know I think nine scripts are complete, and then there are like a bunch of treatments that were done too, and just kind of learning more about that and thinking just like what Star Trek could have been, and I talk about this in the book too, and um, it just like this this random kind of what you know this tangent side side quest or whatever that that could have been what star trek was and what star trek would become and it's it's fascinating to think about like you know what would have happened if they'd actually succeeded in, in making phase two and we'd have an entirely different sense of what star trek is right now i mean you know there's a two-parter involving the klingons where the klingons are like oh it's like we have like this weird cast system and one of them are in one of the casts are like all like cyborgs and like oh. yeah, and the entire Klingon empire is run by like this child who's like meant to be like a, like a, a what is it? The Dalai Lama or something like that. And it's all, it's almost it's sounds like real Moses. trippy, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, but, but it's, it's, it's wild. And it's just um, to think like what would have happened had the Klingons been, been that kind of a, of a culture. It, it just would have completely reinvented what Star Trek was. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting. How did you and Lisa Clink get hooked up? You guys are um, such a great duo. Thank you. She's lovely. We'd actually, uh, beyond being an author, I'm also a screenwriter in Los Angeles, and we had both worked on uh, the TV show Pandora, which was on the CW. Oh, cool I years love ago. That show. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so we had co-written an episode together and uh, which was this wild fun time. I mean, it was, it was fantastic. And um uh yeah you know we, i mean she's very easy to get along with she's just so so lovely and so so caring and so giving and so um uh you know mark had had this idea of doing like a spinoff to the glorious trexworth podcast and um he just thought we'd, we'd be a good team and i i think we have been so far so 
Absolutely. Very complimentary too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, also, everybody at home, my goodness, I should have mentioned this at the top. We have two gigantic announcements to make today. And I don't mean just this book because we've already made that announcement. Oh, just this little book. <laughs> two more. <laughs> and I don't mean the announcement about Strange New Worlds because that's that's them. But we, Virtual TrekCon, have two gigantic announcements to make. Uh, so everybody stay tuned. Maybe we'll tell them in like an hour at the end of the show. What do you think? Or should we tell them now? I don't know what's... How do we, how do we do one now, one later? Okay. The teaser and then a, the follow up. All right. Well, you know what? Let's let them vote on oh. this. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay, this is where so, we're going. <laughs> so while they're voting on this, um, let us bring this fun little item up right here. Um, that's been in the news. Goes a little something like that. You know these guys, okay? So uh, the word is from Akiva Goldsmith. Hey, Goldsman, I should say. next to me at the New York premiere of Picard. You weren't supposed to say that. He was incognito. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. That was Ian Spelling when it first came up. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Uh, Akiva Goldsman spoke at the MIT Media Lab this week. And noted that Strange New Worlds Season yeah. 2 premiere will be announced imminently, plus confirmed Season 3 was about to begin filming. So that's kind of some that's big awesome. news uh, in the Strange New Worlds front. Mm -hmm. And we all kind of expected Season 3 to be happening, but it's nice to know that it's already <laughs> being shot. So that means Ooh. it's or it's about to be. So that means that decision has been made. Uh, we also expected that Season 2 will be coming up at some point soon, right? It's It's got to be. It's certainly not going to be Discovery. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. the, so, so it's going to be either Lower Decks or Strange New Worlds or Prodigy. Uh, it sounds like maybe Strange New Worlds is next. What do you guys think? Strange World started in like May last year, right? Yeah, it was Cinco, oh, yeah. De, Cinco de Pico. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I kind of... I'm so, so yeah, I do think it'll be next now, especially because those Blu-ray give, giveaways are happening, which I know all, always happens. But this time they're they sent along like swag bags to people who are giving them away. And that sort of like points to they're really hyping up the PR machine instead of just like the normal here are a couple Blu-rays, give them away and do whatever you want with them. Like that seems like we're starting to get more hype. And also Jenny R. Johnson in the live chat just said. She just found out one of her friends is working on Strange New World season three. Oh, that's cool. Amazing. Very nice. That's we're gonna need to hear more about that later. Totally. <laughs> I hope there's not a long gap after Picard. We got spoiled there having like Trek every week all last year. Oh, so, so I hope there's not a long gap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I doubt it. I mean, it feels like there's there spacing them out accordingly like i think we now know that like picard season three has been done for a while and they've been just mm -hmm. kind of like sitting on it just to let other shows have their time and then so i'm sure that once picard is wrapped up we'll we'll get some news pretty quick about something something next what do you guys think will come after that do you think it, do you think we'll get a little bit of prodigy before lower decks or do you think lower decks will come back in august september like it usually does what do you all Pretty think question. i'm not sure i'm going back and forth on my bet. Yeah. But I mean, we do have probably 25 to 30 more weeks of Star Trek after Picard that they are committed to showing this year. Yeah. My guess, I don't have any knowledge. My yeah. guess is it's going to be Strange New Worlds, and then there's going to be a gap, and then Lower Decks, and then Prodigy. Yeah. That's my guess. That's what I'm thinking, too. Do you guys know when uh, First Contact Day is? Isn't it? Uh, is that yes, April 5th? Cool. Right? Uh, April 5th, yeah. Okay. Good. So here's my question in the poll before we even get to the, the major announcement. It is, when do you think Strange New Worlds Season 2 will premiere, or will be announced? Uh, when when will the Season 2 uh, premiere be announced? Before First Contact Day, that's the next two weeks. Yeah. On First Contact Day, that would be fun. Or after First Contact Day, some, somewhere out there. 
When's Frontier Day? <laughs> <laughs> I could throw us off and do it on Star Wars Day. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> That's cute. Turn around, fair play, right? <laughs> there you go. Exactly. We'll declare it Star Wars or Star Trek Day 2. <laughs> Right. Yeah, so everybody <laughs> listening in, uh, we didn't put the date in the poll, but first contact day is April 5th. So that's two weeks from now. Um, so if you think it's going to be right on April 5th, or you think it's going to be right before in the next two weeks or sometime after. Wow. Dang. This is kind of a one-sided poll so far. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel like I'm the only and then, <laughs> and then after that, we'll talk about the major announcement. Boy, oh boy, this is going to be madness. Boy, oh uh, boy. How much you guys like in Strange New Worlds? I feel like it's been getting Love it. major acclaim. I feel like it might mm. be having the best first season reaction of any yeah. of the shows. What do you guys think? Mm. Isn't it like 99% on Rotten Tomatoes or something like that? It's like it's almost pretty perfect. high. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty high. It's a great show. Mm -hmm. Okay. I thought there'd be much more debate about that. <laughs> no, <laughs> somebody was no, gonna say nope, great. Discovery 2017 was huge. <laughs> Lower Decks had a great start. Uh, well, Picard Prodigy season three is having a lot of fun. Pr Prodigy had a has had a great start, a great first season. Probably the most surprising first season for most Reed. viewers, I think. Um, but Strange New Worlds, yeah, great first season too as well. I agree with Melissa. And I don't think, I mean, I think in general, it's going to be hard for animated Trek to get the same viewership as non-animated Trek. So I think that's going to be, you know, just an intrinsic difference there. Mm -hmm. I wish I would advertise it more. I was just on the yeah. subway and there, like some of the subway stations, like Herald Square, some of the major ones are decked out in all Paramount Plus Nickelodeon. Yeah. And it's showcasing all the Nickelodeon shows. I'm like, so I walked around extra in the subway, which who does that? And I was like, uh, where the <laughs> who does that indeed that what? Me looking for prodigy signs <laughs> oh, okay. which I was very I disappointed to see there weren't any it was all like blues clues and other ones I hadn't heard of but I just I wish it got more publicity because that is the other like standout first season I think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it does it's feel like Strange New World season one got the best reaction just out of fans I mean Critics too, maybe, but you know, we don't. As fans, we don't listen to the critics because they're usually they're usually way off on everything. They're, they're just copying us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they're not yeah. in my head. They don't. They don't, they know don't what get I us. like. Yeah. <laughs> they don't know why Sub Rosa is amazing. Right? They don't get it. Threshold, <laughs> thresholds where it's at. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, oh, so check this out. So uh, speaking of Strange New Worlds, another big announcement is that, of course, starting today, um, that's another thing that's dropping today, is season one of Strange New Worlds is out on Blu-ray, um, oh. DVD, and Steelbook. So season one of Star Trek Strange New Worlds beams down to your favorite retailer on Blu-ray, DVD, and Steelbook today this is in my own words you know the story captain pike uhura number one spock the enterprise it is freaking awesome get yours right away from cbs home entertainment check this out if you're like wondering well what i don't i don't get it what does that oh mean God, what does that look like features just go to amazon.com look at that you can see it it's right here see so pretty so pretty can we ask I who of the, of the five of us who actually has a blu-ray player I guess I do. I've never used it. <laughs> so you have one I the only one here. Don't don't tell me that. <laughs> uh, well, I think I mean correct me if I'm wrong, Ryan, but isn't that also isn't it also coming out in 4K? Yeah, yeah. That's really. I mean, that's I think really special because, like, especially in the era where everyone is you know claiming that home video is dying out, and apparently only one out of five people has a Blu-ray player at home. <laughs> <laughs> Well, can I can it I address is. that <laughs> and answer that I don't know if I have a Blu-ray player? Do you have a PS5 or an Xbox? No, 
Oh, okay. oh, we do have an Xbox. I didn't know it played Blu-ray. Then, then, then I Xbox. do. That's right. yeah. See, but I got, ah. I got like this thing. I swear, like ten years ago, that played. I think it still played VHS, and I think it played DVD and Blu-ray on the same oh. tray. Wow. Right. It's, it's Here's smart, the thing. Yeah. I don't ever you I don't think I've used it in 10 years. I don't think I've I've subscribed. I don't haven't plugged in my TV in 10 years. Everything's just on my computer. So I wow. don't remember if I, if it is I might have it but if if I do have a Blu-ray player I haven't used it in 10 years. But I do suggest that everybody else do it and Peter as you mentioned if you have a video game console you gamers out there then you have a Blu-ray player. Uh, yeah and also just like the 4k i i love how paramount and cbs have really been pushing the 4k for a lot of the tv shows mm -hmm. um that's cool. a lot of a lot of you know times that the logic is like well why release a tv season um when you know like disney plus i don't think any disney plus shows get home video or netflix is the better example they never release anything on home video but for some people it's like they really care about that it it does improve the quality substantially over streaming and uh you're able to put some great special features on there so i'm, I'm a huge supporter of it yeah, this thing looks packed with special features and then one really cute thing that they did is they also include in the box set a quality of mercy the TOS episode that's like the companion episode Ooh. to the fin season finale. I oh. think so like the 2006 remastered on the DVD set. So you don't have to like change out DVDs to compare the two. And then there are a bunch of other things like, because obviously people say, well, why are you going to get it for special features when like we, not that we get, we get bombarded in a good way with special features every week with the ready room and um, mm -hmm. like the podcast interviews and like the inter everybody's social media. Um, so I guess what they're doing now is like, there's one feature where they, Anson Mount did like captain's logs on his phone. And then like, they did a common, like they compiled them. So like that gets released as a special feature. So there is footage that we haven't seen. And it's just, it's so cute. And that one's called Pike's Peak, which. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that like a coffee well, company? when I when I saw the title, well, yeah, oh. and when I saw the title, like, <laughs> well, is this yeah, about his hair. <laughs> well, <laughs> about how they came up nice. with his hair, dude. Yeah, no, it's an actual uh, peak in Colorado, too. Yeah, <laughs> no, I was gonna say that too. It's an actual place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so okay, uh, the poll. Actually, did we give the winner of the previous poll? Uh, when do you think Strange New World season two premiere will be announced? 7% said after first contact day. That's basically 16 or more days from now. 11% of you said before first contact day, some point in the next 15 days or so. And 80% of you said, nope, my money is on first contact day. Exactly. That's when it's going to happen. Uh, I think it's a good bet. I think that sounds fun. What day of the week is first contact day? Looks like good it question. is... Thanks. Looks like it is a Wednesday. So it's 15 days from now. So wow. like before. I think it's before. Okay. I think it's before. That's my guess. I don't know anything, but I think it would be before. Because that would be right before Picard episode eight drops. So that's right. still plenty of time. Yeah, there's still Picard still going. Uh, what's up, Jenny R. Johnson in the live chat? Faith Howell, Thomas. Chris, Bob D, we see all of you and we appreciate you showing up. What's up, Lucia from Brazil? Oi, uh, one Trek fan. You got a big package coming your way too, by the way, in the mail. Scott Jensen's there too. Scott Jensen, what's up, buddy? Uh, you got a uh, surprise coming your way too. Man, everybody, this is crazy. Okay, so the other poll uh, was, the question was, what do you want to, when do you want to hear the announcements? Uh, the options were both later, both right now, or one now and one later, like that yummy candy. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite now and later flavor? Good stall. <laughs> the red and the green one. Ch there, I think it was cherry and strawberry. Oh, green, I cherry think was... Cherry and was, apple. I think there was a sour apple and there was a yeah. watermelon that were both green, maybe. Oh. Sour apple was good. 
sour yeah. apple everything except for sour apple smearing off ice thumbs down <laughs> oh, they tricked done. me on saint patrick's day um all right so zero percent of you said both later 28 percent said one now one later and 71 percent said both right now uh but that was like five minutes ago so i don't know oh we're already later <laughs> now it's later <laughs> all right so here are the big announcements. Uh, they are both save the date type announcements. Ooh. The first one is so big. It's so huge that all we can tell you right now is to just save the date. Get out right. your Ryan's Rolodex birthday. or whatever, <laughs> whatever people, you know, and you're writing implement. Everybody get your number two pencils. <laughs> uh, the no, date the is... Now. May 22nd. That's, I feel like bingo. That's May 22nd. Like May Jemison, but spelled differently. Oh my gosh. Um, so May 22nd, it's going to be enormous. It's, uh, we're very excited about it. Um, <laughs> it's gonna anyway can't talk about it yet uh but it's gonna be really big and really cool and it's gonna change the face of star trek forever is that a big enough tease i don't know <laughs> <laughs> um all right the other one we can talk about and the other one everybody on this panel knows about and peter's about to find out um, and that is mm -hmm. that Virtual Trek Con will be doing a live event, a full day event. Um, and it goes a little something like this. A lot of us, we go to Star Trek Las Vegas or what was previously known as Star Trek Las Vegas. Now it's like a really long, there's numbers. It's just, but it's cool. Everybody mission. calls it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> STLV. Um, Including them now, again, <laughs> which I love. Do they, do they really? Yeah. On their website. Yeah. It's That's just good. letters. Yeah, it's, it's a big deal. It's just letters. What does anybody care? Um, so, yes, Scott Jensen forever. Um, so uh, we go to Star Trek Las Vegas. And anybody that's gone, you know, in July, you're at like a fever pitch. Some people start packing really early like Rhea our friend with the uh long Greek last name she packs it's like fourth of July weekend and she's like all right done packing for, for next month um but everybody starts they're they're building their cosplays they're building up their costumes they're making their plans some people are saying are right, do you 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 guys doing something Thursday night all right we're gonna make our party on Friday night that no you can't do oh, wow. Friday night because that's okay. Well, what about Wednesday night? Can we do, you know, so everybody's planning out their events and planning out their panels and it's just bedlam. So what we've got is July 16th. That is two weeks before Star Trek Las Vegas, maybe 16 days for the late comers. Uh, we will be doing the virtual Trek con pre con con. And what that's going to be is just it's going to be one full day of basically talking about and preparing for Star Trek Las Vegas. We'll have people on talking about their events that they're putting on or the panels to look forward to or their wares that they're going to be selling in the vendor's room. Um, I also think it would be so cool if we could have the cosplayers, you know, the ones that are like are in a last minute mm -hmm. panic to build their cosplays if they can show us the progress where they are in their crazy spacesuit, they're two weeks away and they're like showing us like a half made, you know, Klingon, <laughs> whatever. Uh, what, are, what are they? What's Baldrick? Is that what that thing's called? What that's called? I know what you mean. I, I think so, but Sash. I don't remember the name. It's, it's weird. Uh, I heard Worf going, I'm decorated too. <laughs> I know he says, I am adorned as well. I think. No, like that, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and as you know, on the seventh rule, we adorned. had uh, Michael adorned. <laughs> oh, very nice. 
we did have some Star Trek Las Vegas interviews as well in the past on the seventh rule. So we'll be mm-hmm. including some of those as well. We can also do like some uh, some more of our Star Trek speed dating for like events, parties, panels, photo ops. Uh, a lot of people want to do that, you know, dress up in cosplay and everybody dresses up as uh, the Wrath of Khan or whatever. And then they meet on Sunday at 9 a.m., you know, while the rest of us are sleeping. And uh, so everybody can talk about, you know, you can come on and you can talk about your specific photo ops that you're going to be doing and just get everybody prepared. And any, everybody that's never gone to Star Trek Las Vegas, you can just enjoy the fun and it'll be as if you kind of went, kind of, you're, you're not missing anything. <laughs> not really. And it might so, talk you into going. Like it did me July. when Seventh Rule did STLV like all of June, July last time. Like in Tell us about that, Anne-Marie. That was amazing. You guys did. So in 2019, Seventh Rule did an interview with different people going to STLV every single day for the whole month leading up to STLV. And it just took my breath away. And I was like, this is amazing. At first, I was like, who goes to conventions? That's so nerdy. And then by the end of the <laughs> month, I was like, sign me up. And then I got a ticket and went like a day later. It was amazing. And it was like the best weekend ever. <laughs> Oh, wow. Which wow. mentioned mention that July 16th is a Sunday. This will be on mm-hmm. the day of the week for that. Thank you. And it's also two days after Bastille Day. So that makes it easy to remember for all you Americans. Yes. Day before my son's birthday. That's easy. Oh, oh it's 17th. Cool. Peter, do you have some French in you? Um, sure. About the same amount as Picard does. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> You can sing. Allons en fond de la patrie. Le jour de gloire est arrivé. Entre nous deux. Not bad. Not Not bad. (laughs) So, everybody, that is uh, the second big announcement uh, coming from us. Uh, July 16th is the pre con con. We'll probably have to have a vote at some point, some poll to come up with a better name than that. <laughs> the pre con con. I don't know. Pre con oh, pie. Pre con <laughs> pie. I don't know. But it, it kind of goes with can can, which is associated with French, which is also two days after Bastille Day. <laughs> Good point. No. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> reaching reaching <laughs> it worked works for me uh all right so anyway you you guys get get the gist of that it'll be a full day thing um and so just mark your calendars for may 22nd we're going to change the landscape of star trek forever and everybody will hate us for it uh and then on july 16th everybody will love us all over again because we're going to have a whole bunch of pre-STLV fun together. All right. So. Peter, are you going to STLV? Um, I'm, I'm hoping to. I'm still kind of figuring out my, my summer schedule a little bit. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping to. Um, it's oh, no, I was fun. just assuming that it's you were. And Gloria's text person needs help so running too. their table. They well. like escape to go <laughs> fo- not stop, to go find Robin Curtis. And then I don't yes. see them for hours when I walk by. So <laughs> they, uh, yeah, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, feel, still figuring out those details, I guess. So it's, um, but I'm, I'm hoping to go probably just as a fan, if nothing else, um, and just be chilling and, um, you know, uh, uh, nerding out at all these parties apparently. And, and... <laughs> but yeah, it's a, such a fun time. I mean, I, I love going and it's, um, I, the first one I went to was actually during COVID, I guess. So that was 2021. Um, mm-hmm. And it was, I mean, it was probably because of the quarantine, but it was such a relaxed feel <laughs> inside the convention because yeah. they, so many people had to cancel because they were uh, not yeah. vaccinated and, and stupid. But so the convention floor was just like open and there was just like, mm-hmm. oh, we can just, we can walk. And like, I could walk up to, you know, uh, all, all these people who, you know, just be like, hi. And then walk away very quickly. And that was, it was, it was, it was, it was such, a nice, such a nice vibe. It was such a good vibe. <laughs> Muhammad, who are the people that you walk away from the most at Star Trek Las Vegas? I walk away from the most? I don't know. I walk away from anybody. You know, like, yeah. no, 
yeah, there's no way I have to go avoid. I really enjoy it. It's really fun. <laughs> I mean, the whole point of going is to interact with people. I'm not going to run away That's from right. anybody there. <laughs> I'm not just horribly shy in person. I'm just uh, I think. That's, uh, that's all. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Peter, if you go to Star Trek Las Vegas, first terrible ass bar crap vegas drink is on me buddy hey yeah. now we're talking that's a, that's a vegas crisis too man i know that's not nothing to say that that's awesome. that was a good sell <laughs> thank you <laughs> uh jenny r johnson will be going for the first time ever i believe Yay. uh matt boardman's also in the live chat telling her dude you gotta go it's so much fun and scott jensen's fun. like i don't want to hear this i'm probably not going to go it'll be fun um, being back in the rio i mean it was, it was still fun last year too but it'll yeah. be still it'll be nice being back in the rio just where do you guys familiar. go with like the go with the hotel in the rio for convenience or do you go somewhere else for comfort because the rio, rio. Bits are not convenience. Rio. Convenience, convenience convenience all the way okay. convenience. Yeah. Fair. fair fair last time my my shower was like broken and like i had to call the front desk and be like the shower is screeching at me in a torturous way <laughs> all night I, I need someone to come and fix this and I've, I've like i've never called the hotel front desk for anything before and i was just like i don't know if this is appropriate for me to be calling you with this problem it is. but uh, it's very I appropriate <laughs> Uh, I feel I like, like don't even notice anything because it's still like there's so much space compared to New York apartments. I'm like, this is oh. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like three times the size of your New York apartment. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> You're like, I, I could live in this walk in closet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess as much as we promote Star Trek Las Vegas for free, uh, yeah. We the Rio kind of doesn't get a ton of love. Like, I mean, I, I love it. Love the Rio. I love it, but I feel like every time we've stayed there, there's been something with the room. There's been yeah. something, but they they re- renovated it, so I'm sure that's all going to be in the past but as we right. celebrate. Right. The future. I'm problem with my room. It's always been fine. Me either. Yeah. My rooms are great, and also I just love the I love what I love the most about the Rio is their bar setup, so that it's just like it's really social for Star Trek. Because yeah. it's just like open concept and basically like mm-hmm. almost everybody has to walk by there. Uh, yeah. And you get to, instead of like missing people every, like there were some people when we were at Valleys that I didn't even see the whole time. Right. And this just really makes it so you really get to see everybody. I love mm-hmm. that. The biggest challenge with Valleys was the, how they had part of it on that first floor, but part of it on like the 26th floor, which I mean, I understand right. that's just what was available. So it was not their fault. But that that did just separate people a long way there in the convention. It was definitely a long distance getting from one set of rooms to the other set of rooms. Mm-hmm. And there is something to be said about the Rio being off the strip. Yeah. And so it's it's like this trek bubble yeah. in the Rio. Yes. I absolutely hate I like Vegas. that. I don't need any normies. Go, except for Star Trek. Yeah. So I'm like, we don't want any normies invading our space. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the safe space normies fuck off uh i mean you know i'm just saying it because i mean it and there's free parking for you like that's pretty amazing for vegas right yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. well just since we're on the topic of star trek las vegas final thing you guys were kind of talking about valleys now it'll be cool to be back at the rio i agree it'll be great to be back at the rio that's where all the memories are uh Mm -hmm. of the past several years maybe 10 or 12 but Somehow, when I look back at Bally's, I look at back at it with fondness now because it felt like this new adventure where it's like this exciting thing where, yeah. like, I remember kind of showing up early and we had to like figure out, okay, what's oh, where and where, and we're like scouting it. I think Anne Marie showed up like three months early or something crazy <laughs> like that, and she was scouting the place. It made it like this fun, new, exciting adventure of like figuring everything out and I don't know it was nice and I liked their bar setup very much I thought the the one bar that was closest to, to the convention was cool on. with the so seats hot. yeah there was no hash house great. yeah and also <laughs> this is you, true by like the bars not being right by like some of the elevators I just I really did feel like and then people kind of being disoriented I really did feel like I missed seeing a lot of people who normally you see just by them like going home back up to their room at night Mm-hmm. Oh. And also like masquerade, everybody knows to like pop by there. So mm-hmm. I I just I'm just there for like this to see all the <laughs> all the friends and the fans. So it's much more social. Speaking of social, 
on social media, check this out. Mika Burton, that's at Mika Burton, tweeted out, oh, load, she coming with uh, the eyes emoji. T one week until y'all won't be able to escape my face on Picard season three. So obviously we know she's coming. Which means, of course, uh, that Daddy LeVar Burton has yes. got to be. Mm-hmm. She's going to be dragging him and along onto the show. She did some really <laughs> cute posts, too, that are just pictures of her and Ashley Chestnut, who plays the other. And then they're they're like titled as like LaForge sis- or the LaForge sisters or LaForge girls. It's so cute. <laughs> I, I can't even wait. I don't well, you're going to have to. But not much longer. Not long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's it's fun to see. Uh, I think I don't know if it was announced today or not, but like uh, Jordy's a Commodore now, which I was like, that's pretty cool. That's, uh, yeah, I, I, I feel like we've all missed we've we've missed the Commodores. Where have they been hiding? <laughs> yeah, there's not very many. Not, not many Commodores anymore. at all. They were like, there's too Let's many see, insane Lionel ones. Richie. We just need to. Uh, <laughs> well, I can't that's even a remember. Very TOS title. It's but so- I'll tell you. It I is. think it would be awesome if at some point they do like a little a little nod by saying Jordy is now 64. I think that would be a good <laughs> oh a good nod to the gamers of yore. You see, Anne Marie, before you were born, there was a video game console called Commodore 64. Oh, oh yeah. It's like Coleco Vision and all those other oh, weird man. things. Coleco. Those are still all post Atari 2600. <laughs> those were after t- Atari? Yeah, ColecoVision was definitely after Atari 2600. Wow, I think, Atari I think, I think the Commodore 64 was. Yeah, the Atari was in the late 70s. It was crazy. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I forgot to use our awesome special effects. We put in a lot of cash into this special effects for our big announcements. Uh, so here they are. I uh, I Googled Red Alert. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. <laughs> Red alert. <laughs> Big announcements coming. All right. <laughs> and so then in the edit, I'll like, I know oh, it's okay. live. All right, Amory, <laughs> stop yelling at me with your tone of voice. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we've got a you website know, I, called, yeah. Really quick though, I want to see if I can share this with you. I'm not sure if Ooh. I can. Oh yeah, let me uh maybe nope, nope, I don't want to do that. I just that. looked it up Atari 2600 was 1977 when it came out. Oh great. Um wow. wow. Let me see how I can do this. What am I looking for here? Oops. Boy, that's a tease. Did I I think I froze up. Right, we still see you. No, oh yeah, we see you just yeah. fine, but weird. I'm now frozen on or I can't uh my computer maybe we see and hear you Hmm. okay well uh, in that case i i just wanted to share an image of the uh, star trek arcade game from the commodore 64 oh cool Um, uh, but my computer is not being kind at the moment so i'm not i'm sure someone can google it but it's uh, doing it right now Uh, wow what bob d said ryan blew the budget (laughs) i did (laughs) Yeah, but you don't understand. The budget is my dog's name. <laughs> no. no. Wow. It's Dutch. It's a Dutch name. Uh, <laughs> is, is this the game you're talking about? Wow. Is look the, at this. The game I was talking about, yeah. Look at this. Oh, my wow. God. Look at those graphics. Uh, I'm obsessed. Oh, my gosh. That's Beautiful. So cute. Oh, my gosh. I, I actually it. remember this game now that I see it. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Oh. Really? <laughs> Oh, uh, those those eight pixels of glory right there, guys! That is, <laughs> that is... <laughs> wow, check out that main viewer. Ooh, yes. yeah. <laughs> Your orders are as follows: destroy the twenty-four. Wow, that's tough. Destroy the twenty-four Klingon warships what? which that's invaded crazy. the galaxy before they attack Federation headquarters on star date three seven two seven. This gives you twenty-seven days. There are four star bases in the galaxy for resupplying your ship. Are you ready to accept command? No. Call me on Risa. That's 24 is a lot. In 27 days though, right? 
do have triples you can beam onto their ships. Yes. Right. <laughs> I found a friend. I found a friend. <laughs> so what are uh, the other starships doing? This feels like it's just like the big news day. This is crazy is. because there is more big news from a completely different franchise. Matt Boardman earmuffs. Just kidding. He likes the Orville. <laughs> and uh, you'll never guess what that franchise is based on what I just said. Star Wars. Uh, no. Star Galactica. Check this out. <laughs> from a website called winteriscoming.net that everybody always turns to for their sci-fi news, right? I guess. I don't know. It says the Orville of Thrones? star gives promising update about season four renewal. Can we read it? Uh, yeah, please. Sure. It's been over half a year since the finale of The Orville, New Horizons' third season aired on Hulu, and fans are still waiting to find out if the show will ever get a season four. When New Horizons aired last year, it was met with widespread praise. The Seth MacFarlane helmed science fiction dramedy has always been great, but New Horizons marked an enormous leap forward for the series. It had razor sharp writing, special effects that put most Star Wars shows to shame. And ambitious episodes reminiscent of the edgiest eras of Star Trek. Whoa. It's pretty Whoa. intense. <laughs> Wait. But where does it actually mention? Um, I see. Okay. Yeah, the quote is, uh, I'll just read it. While we still don't have an official announcement that season four is happening, recor- recurring Orville star Chad L. Coleman shared an update Clyden. that's giving us yep that's uh, Clyden that's giving us hope Coleman plays Lieutenant Commander Bordas's husband Clyden and has been involved in the show since season one and he finally had a nice little turnaround recently didn't he I loved it he did yeah Redemption uh, great. yeah it was sad when he, did, when he left the, the kid and stuff I was like oh that's terrible but it was good to have the redemption I was yeah. like good riddance so here is his <laughs> quote you watch your mouth here's his quote <laughs> We're all in the loop and out of the loop. We think it's going to happen, but it's still up in the air. There's so much going on with all of these studios that it's just like, well, we got to settle this thing first. Then we can really decide on that thing. A bunch of that is going on. We hope so. Seth has an amazing relationship with Dana Walden and with Disney, who's running it now. And they said they've had promising meetings. So we'll see. Okay. So basically, in a nutshell... The quote is, we think it's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. So Which what is inter- more optimistic than January? No. <laughs> and like, what is nice is that McFarland has such great relationships with like heads of Disney and Hulu, which like really works in its favor. But Seth McFarland also went on to say like later um, last week that uh, basically who like, it's all it's kind of like facing the same issues that Star Trek is having with like the Paramount Showtime budget issues. Um, because I guess like Disney is looking to divest from Hulu. And then it gets to be like a little bit of a gray area since Orville moved from Hulu to Disney. So that's it seems like that's another contributing factor in their meetings. Yeah, I mean, it feels like they're still figuring out just what to do with Hulu exactly. And like, mm-hmm. you know, it. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting time for them. I mean, on the uh, on the Disney side of things, it feels it feels like an easy buy just because like I'm sure Seth MacFarlane is putting a lot of his own money into it, mm-hmm. which you got to figure. I mean, that guy's got to have more money than God at this point. Just with <laughs> everything he's I mean, my God, just the syndication money alone that's because god invested in those cannabis companies and they just didn't (laughs) do well recently a silicon bank yes oh my gosh um but uh you know it's it'll be interesting to see what happens i mean it, it never really broke records in terms of ratings but it was always very well received and i think it's had long legs but um Mm. It'll be interesting to see what what Disney decides to do with it. Your connection to the previous point, there's some folks from the Orville going to be at uh, the Star Trek Las Vegas convention this year. Yeah. So mm-hmm. since it's not the right. official That's convention, they can actually broaden it out in that sense yeah. and have 
that's you know great. shows that have overlapping fandoms. So that's pretty exciting. That's a and, first. That's and, true. Uh, Tom Costantino was saying on Twitter. Also, I guess there are like NASA reports where people who work at NASA like credit uh, certain sci-fi shows for like really standing out. And so he was sharing like screenshots of those reports with actual NASA scientists um, saying how much they love the Orville. Mm-hmm. I'm using Hopefully. character names as references in the reports. Space Force do it too? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I did like that show, honestly. It was ridiculous, but it was fun. I think we watched the first episode of that, Michael Rosenberg and I. We did. And it was, Back in like the early, watch the first days. It was okay, if I remember correctly. Uh, did you guys have Tawny a favorite? Tawny Newsom is in it. Tawny Newsom's in it. Oh, that's cool. Do you guys yeah. have a favorite uh, Orville season? I, I thought... Surprisingly, I thought that season two was the best, in my favorite. opinion. I think I might say the same. I love three. I don't know what y'all are talking about. Three was fantastic. Yeah, that, that's what I thought would be the, the more popular answer is three, for sure. It gets it gets a bit long-winded at time. I think they enjoyed the longer format that Hulu allowed for. Maybe maybe a touch too much. But, uh, my, I mean, the graphics are gorgeous. And I was just like, mm-hmm. good God, this is mm-hmm. this is more mm-hmm. beautiful than... than a lot of stuff we see today so it's uh i was i was very impressed yeah i would say two but dolly puts it over the top for me for three (laughs) she was in two as well though (laughs) was she well she wasn't featured you're right yeah no you're right but actual dolly was in season three (laughs) which was epic I love that was Dolly. a great scene. I love Dolly. <laughs> oh, she's amazing. I just thought that that two-parter, that that mid-season two-parter in yeah. season two, was basically like mm. this this era's uh, best of both worlds. Except mm-hmm. you didn't have to wait, uh, you know, a whole summer for it. I thought that was like the best moment in science fiction that year, whatever year that was, oh. twenty twenty or something like that, or. 2019 it oh, was just you got like that episode with like the emh and uh dr flocks like together again and that was, there's that like yeah, that between, was like good. white cliffs of dover like sort of looking at like the sexuality of um the monklins yeah i mean one had some really great ones too but oh i love that i love season two and yeah no season two was oh, really good episode season one of that one where like with Avis and um as as they're as um like as the captain and whoever was with him, Scott Grimes probably were coming back in the shuttle and they're singing like she's always a, they're listening to She's Always a Woman. Oh. Like some of those moments were just so beautiful. Like I love the special effects are great and I know that that gets a lot of audience, but like oh those character moments are just gorgeous. Yeah. Uh just, our I... friend, sorry, go ahead. Peter. No, no, please, please go. It's just gonna say our friend DJ Kitty Cat in the live chat says, I did not like the juvenile toilet humor phase. Yeah, I hated the first like <laughs> that two one episodes. that one section of uh of toilet humor. Yeah. <laughs> so many toilets in that show. It's it's disgusting. It's just <laughs> <laughs> although I will toilets say they belong in the toilets, they don't belong anywhere else. Se- <laughs> season three had very little humor, if I remember correctly. I, I remember the right. first episode of season three actually had zero yeah, humor crazy. in it. It was kind of confusing. Yeah. It had some, you know, the hum- humorous uh and I think this is one of the shows that it's best. It just has like humorous scenarios or like humorous mm-hmm. uh, interactions with people that feels very honest and genuine. But I, I do agree, like see episode one or whatever, like, and I think McFarland's talked about this and others have talked about this. Is that it wasn't like a Fox mandate, like, oh, we need family guy for Star Trek. It was more just like McFarland was just learning a new skill set. It mm-hmm. was just like, oh, I, I know what I want this show to be, but I'm so used to writing comedy like it it it, 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 was, it took him a few episodes to kind of grow out of that in a way mm-hmm. and uh yeah i think he's it's just he's gotten better and better at it but yeah uh, i definitely think it got better after the first couple of but it does have a ton I mean, of toilet the humor last and i love the it second episode with the real housewives thing it was so funny yeah. and then about a girl was just amazing the real housewives what was that it. 
I don't want to give spoilers, but there's like a, re a Real Housewives clip at the end, which was so funny. Is that was the was that the really episode watched, where they were on the where Teresa parallel. flips the table? Yeah, it's like the yeah. zoo episode. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, iconic. Oh, wait a minute. We interrupt this Orville talk to talk mm -hmm. about more Star Trek, if that's okay with everybody. Okay. Uh, because I realize there's still something else that is well, it should be big news. I'm already talking myself out of it. But it is this item here. Everybody. Stop me if you've heard this one before. Chris oh, Pine wants to return oh. for oh Star God. Trek IV. Uh, now, I know what you might be thinking, mm -hmm. everybody at home. You're thinking, yeah, I saw that news in October and April of last year. It wouldn't be a week if there wasn't Star Trek last movie year. news. And then I'm looking, <laughs> no, this is just a few years ago. This and is or a few days ago. This I is know. news. All, okay. 2019. <laughs> How many yeah. times? It's like... At least once a month, we get a news item that's like, all right, everybody, Chris Pine is ready for, you know, or, or who else, Zachary Quinto, <laughs> or, you know, Zoe Saldana. That's it. Okay. Here, here. Oh, no, not Quentin Tarantino, but we got another person. And then, a, man, these guys are just teasing. I feel like a, this is a roller coaster of emotion. I didn't realize how much. I liked those JJ Star Trek movies, the the you know the Kelvin verse movies, until they kept teasing us with more of them. Now yeah. suddenly I'm like, give me it, I yeah. want it so bad. I just give just just give me Star Trek. Yeah, Tarantino. I don't care. Time travel, Thor, whatever it is, I'll take Thor. it. Just give me. <laughs> right? I, they I, had I, Thor. I love Thor, I love Ryan's yeah. logic here. It's like I didn't realize how much I loved it until I realized I couldn't have it, and now I wanted it. <laughs> Until they convinced me that I do. They're like, you do love it. Watch this reaction. It's coming soon. See how you're interested? That means you like it. No, it's coming Ooh. soon. No, it's not. Yeah, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> we just want to build up the anticipation. <laughs> By the time they come back to it, though, our young hip crew is going to be like... Yeah, it'll it's gonna be, be like, like a Star Trek of them being glasses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it uh better or worse or about the same? Can I see uh can I see one again? <laughs> yeah, one and this is two. Yeah, I, I don't know, about the same. Right? No, that's when you get your vision tested. Maybe that's just me. One or two. <laughs> one or two. <laughs> or about the same. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think too. Wait, can I see one again? Yeah, it's always very stressful. Like I don't want to do it wrong because then I'm gonna have like glasses that give me a headache. <laughs> right. No. And then you're like, is this gonna ruin my vision if I yeah. wear the wrong yeah. thing? It's scary. Anyway, Peter, how excited are you about Star Trek 4? That's definitely <laughs> gonna happen soon. <laughs> um, I, I feel so jaded at this point, just from all the uh teases over the <laughs> I mean, we're literally talking seven years now with teases right and like you know as much as yeah. I, I i did enjoy the 09 one a lot um and i found there's stuff to like about the others as well but like unfortunately they didn't do well like they just i mean i i, I hate to spell it out that way but it's like financially they just they didn't um the first one made a lot of money on home video, which was a big surprise. Hmm. And you notice how like it took four years to get into darkness. And I think the reason for that was like it took that time for Paramount to be like, oh, this is how much money we made off Blu-ray sales. That's really fun. Um, but uh, Into Darkness and and I think Beyond didn't even really break even. Um, and so it's it's a hard sell, you know, and yeah, even I lost though, a like, lot of money us, on Beyond Me. <laughs> I did. Even though like, like I feel like impossible. for us, it's like uh we we <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry <laughs> oh, <my> <laughs> um i feel like for us it's like we know that star trek would make money in perpetuity no matter what it is because like we'll show up right and like by that logic it's like well why aren't you just making movie after movie after movie because like sooner or later you guys are going to make your money back um but uh, I don't know. I feel like Paramount just doesn't quite think of things like that. They want it, their money now, like right now. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I don't know if, and, you know, Chris Pine is a big actor. He wants his money. He wants his, his, uh, his rate, which is pricey. Um, 
and everyone else. I mean, Zoe Solanda is a big star as well. And, you know, all these other people, they, they want their money. And it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a harder sell these days. It's, I'm more bummed that we didn't get that Noah Hawley movie, which sounded like it was going and it was like a $50 million feature. Which one? I'm like, the Noah Hawley uh, Star Trek uh, film that was being batted about um, a few years back, mm-hmm. which was going to be just kind of like a standalone, entirely different crew, entirely different, um, you know, scenario. Who knows what time period it was going to be, um, but just kind of a sci-fi film set in the Star Trek universe. And like they, from what he's talked about in interviews, it's like they they had been casting. They had, you know, were ready to go a few a few weeks away from production. And wow. and then as often happens, you know, uh, uh, what is it that Shinzon says in Nemesis? Like a, a regime change happened, and and the uh, political the uh, motivations for the the Paramount shifted again, and they just decided, well, let's mm-hmm. just scrap all this and look again at doing a Star Trek Four. So, Bummer. Which we saw. So our good friend in the live chat. Leb D says, will they do another movie with Beastie Boys music? And I, for one, Leb Leb D, uh, I agree with what you're insinuating here. I don't want it. I don't want, I don't you want, I don't want it. Sabotage again. No, I, I've heard it plenty in the 90s. I was fine with it. And I didn't need it in two out of three i couldn't believe it when they played it again in in beyond i was like are you guys serious uh, how about intergalactic (laughs) so what you want Anne marie (laughs) get it that's another uh so here's a fun poll question what was your least favorite aspect of the kelvin movies (laughs) lens lens flare because i know everybody cried about that a lot i put beastie boys in there just for me and leb uh (laughs) I put too confusing in there because I don't know. Maybe some people are like, I, I don't get it. What is I don't I don't know. And uh, I put contrived action sequences in there because I feel like that was another thing with like the motorcycle. Like they clearly just wanted they they wanted that scene and wrote the script around the scene rather than just letting it naturally come to a motorcycle and Beastie Boys going around in a circle and. Why was there that zero G fight again? I don't yeah. even remember. There was the, the zero G. I like and the, Beyond, the you know, the, the, not the skydiving. The skydiving was cool, but no, the mm-hmm. in the end of Beyond, like the big fight was with Idris Elba and Kirk, and they're like in above the space station thing. Am I mixing things up here? But like, no, that was they weird. somehow like ended up in the top part where it was all like zero gravity or whatever. Yeah. Yes, they were just like iron manning it out up there and it was really kind of odd and i don't know but i'll sit back now (laughs) (laughs) yeah there are a lot of things that i like them overall but i I didn't like this the in the second one the the attempts to repeat stuff from wrath of Khan. like just just do your own thing just don't like don't try to do the the you know one of them dying the other one on the outside of the glass come on like no that's already great the way it is. Leave it alone. Yeah. So that uh, that poll is happening now. It's just so um, hard. Like it's a, it is kind of crazy how much Star Trek there is to think about, and like I feel like I'm starting to hit a wall. I'm like, there's so many series going on. Like now I have to think about the movies too. Like whoa, my head's like gonna explode. <laughs> like it's a lot to keep track of. So I understand why. Like I want a movie. Everything is. Yeah, I mean, I want a movie because then we can stop having these articles every week. Come on, let's just move the, move on and get a movie so we have some actual. Yeah, just do it or don't. But it's also like right. a hilarious There's bit no on try. all of our new, on our show it and is. other Star Trek news sh- shows, like because it comes up like it, at least once a month, but probably more. And just it's it's amazing. Well, well, let's. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, please, Peter. I was just going to say too. It's it's the sad part of Hollywood too. It's like they haven't. This isn't the, these teases aren't just out of nowhere. Like people have been getting paid to work on these exactly. movies for the last mm-hmm. seven years, and nothing happens. Well, and granted, you know, in the at least now people of, who are working know. What to yeah, <laughs> you know, and like there's got. I think there's at least like seven scripts that have been submitted. Mm-hmm. 
you know, oh, from various man. people. And it's like, maybe some of them were bad. Maybe some of them were actually great. <laughs> who knows? You know, we'll never yeah. know. But yeah, also I hope we know think someday. The, the changing of the guard in all of that time where they're trying to write the script and, and you know, studios are merging and, and, and yeah, things are changing. So it, that's got to be difficult too because you've got two new new studio heads that are calling the shots that have different tastes and and yeah, yeah. some are salty I know. Some are sweet. Like when you look up paramount global or like different like the paramount like proper when they talk about their star trek movie franchises like on their website and stuff they always list star trek it's like forrest gunk which i don't know if that's a franchise and Star Trek Such and this is franchise. like their movie part <laughs> and so clearly like they're like out touting it so it is kind of surprising that well then why isn't there another movie if this is what you consider your top movies but it is mm. weird how like even you know prior to the JJ stuff like Star Trek was really a low budget franchise like they mm-hmm. you know I mean you look at the budgets for the and they keep getting smaller and smaller you get some people like Nick Meyer who can come in and make it look big but like you know, I mean, David Carson talks about in my book, The Center Seat, uh, yeah. of Star Trek, that, uh, you know, oh, two weeks before production, they sliced like five million off the budget. And it's just like, what the hell? You know, it's, they got a plan in place and, and Paramount just keeps undercutting them, just being like, well, yeah, but do it for less. And I think. Can you know, imagine? Especially... Can you imagine if they did that again this year or th- this for the next movie, if they're ever going to do it? Uh, if they're like, we do, that's it. Five million less. Sorry, everybody. They'd be like, "All right, we got to cut out a scene with Chris Pine." (laughs) (laughs) I guess it's going to be a tough one. One less lens flare. (laughs) That's That's pretty good. Well, uh, we're going to go pretty soon, everybody. So let's talk about this week, shall we? Question. Let's let's Uh, say one thing also that is kind of news hitting. Uh, If you follow Ben Robinson on Twitter. Uh, Mm -hmm. A lot of those Eagle Moss ships are now up for sale. And I think, I don't know if they're sold out already, but make sure you're following that because those things are going like hotcakes. And I think it's at Ben C. Robinson. Let me just pull up his Twitter handle. Because these things are in demand. Uh, Our buddies at trekmovie.com cover this as well. Hero Collector Star Star Trek ship models relaunching through Master Replicas. Site wow. goes live on Sunday. So that was a couple days ago because it looks like this was Ready? updated. Yeah, this is March 17th. Um, but yeah, oh, it's good Ben point, C.S. Look at Robinson. This. Ben at Ben C.S. Robinson. Look at these guys. We know some. Is that the pastor right there? Mm-hmm. It looks, it like, looks it. like it. Yeah. Yeah. What's this one? I remember this one too from something. What was this is guy? The, is that the F? Is that the Donald? Or... Ah, that's right. Dauntless, oh, so. yeah. He's got the four nacelles. Well, I don't know this one. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good guy. one there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I remember this one, too, but I don't remember which one, because I remember these little shark fins here. Wow, these are great. Anyway, I'm at insane. Ben I'm like, C.S. I want to buy Robinson. some of these because they'll probably accrue in value. <laughs> uh, we'd love to have Ben Robinson as a guest someday, but He's uh, out in the UK, so he'd have to stay up till three in the morning. So uh, everybody will give you his address. <laughs> send him some Pike's Peak coffee to keep him up, and then he'll do it. Maybe. Uh, okay. So uh, let's see. Yesterday, Monday on. Uh, please, yes, thanks. <laughs> I'll be quick. This, Everybody's this really... like Ryan. Just do this thing instead. So, right. Since we were talking about the new Star Trek and talking about ships, so let's <laughs> combine them. This is a fairly straightforward one. What was the name of Nero's ship in Star Trek 2009? Leave it at that. Go for it. Brian's Easy. like, shoot, what is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> what was Did the name really... of, sure, what was the name of Nero's ship in Star Trek 2009? I know it and I can't remember it right now. Peter knows it. He remembers Really? No, Sorry, I'm, I'm nodding, just being like, "What is the name of that ship?" Um, <laughs> I know. We know it. We uh, know it. It's yeah. I oh, I got it. it. I remember. All right. I knew I had it. And yep. Can we start with what we had? What we did Sunday because it was so amazing and it's a must see. 
you see everybody this is what they i can't just... stop thinking about it <laughs> all right uh what was sunday was okay sunday? yes gotcha okay so we're going back in time all the way to last Sunday on the 7th Rule YouTube channel. We Two released our uh, first segment of, what was it? Uh, Angel One. That's right. Angel One with, of course, Denise Crosby, Sirach Lofton, and Leonard Crowfoot. Uh, no, no, the no, reason. No, this was. Sunday no, two days no. ago was big goodbye. Amory, what do you want us to talk about? The big, you just, the big goodbye. You just say it, please. Thank okay, you. Okay, sorry. <laughs> well, we'll get to yours in a minute. But like two days ago, Sunday, we released uh, the big goodbye, and it had Felix Leach um, played by Harvey Jason, and like that interview was just fantastic. And you get to hear like all this amazing stuff about his life, and he name drops Julie Andrews. Who is Denise Crosby's ex um, stepmother in law? And it's just, oh, that his life is incredible. And he has such a cool, like, second life as this amazing um, first edition bookstore owner in LA. So, totally must see viewing. So, that was Sunday on the seventh row. I thought that was like nine days ago. No, that was just two days ago. And then following that is the Deep Space Nine deep dives on the seventh rule as well um no the big goodbye though okay anyway gotta move on so everybody i'm sure oh, that no. was not confusing at all for any of you sorry uh but <laughs> we've got uh data lore after that oh you're of right of course yeah okay yeah, two days ago was data lore. But anyway, you can find all of these on the Seventh Rule YouTube channel. Uh, don't listen to us. We're all we've got way too many episodes oh floating around in our heads. Uh, but two days ago uh, was data lore. Nine days ago was the big goodbye. But they're both up there now. They're great. And they are amazing. Then yesterday on the Seventh Rule YouTube channel, we released our full review of The Battle with Denise Crosby. So go check that out as well. Um, Muhammad, what do we have on uh, Falling Towers? Watch the first this Wednesday. Uh, so we're still in rebooted cartoon month. So we're doing the Spider-Man 2017 cartoon. Ooh. That'll be a fun chat with, uh, <laughs> with um, ah, shoot. Um, actor darnell davis darnell who was davis. a klingon yes. in star trek yes. six mm -hmm. so that's going to be a lot of fun everybody knows and loves darnell uh it's yeah we're doing chat. rebooted cartoons month then on thursday of course on the seventh rule youtube channel we've got picard season three episode six review at 6 p.m pacific 9 p.m eastern time so check that out that's gonna be super exciting and fun and then on Friday, right here on this channel, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern time, it is Star Trek and Chill. We've got so many big announcements for you on Star Trek and Chill. Nah, we we'll them all up today. Too. What? Katie Nicola has a special announcement for Star Trek and Chill, I believe, this right. Friday. Right. Oh, oh, here's yeah. a tease. Yeah. There's a package here. I had to cover up the I have one too. I don't want any weirdos. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to be <laughs> yeah. unboxing these. <laughs> uh unbagging unenveloping these on friday everybody so stay tuned for that that's right here on this channel 5 p.m pacific 8 p.m eastern time uh and then lastly on uh sunday the seventh rule youtube channel that is when we will have uh the first segment of angel one with of course denise crosby and leonard crowfoot mm -hmm. Uh, who will tell you all kinds of amazing and fun and interesting things. So if that all made sense to you. Angeloni, which is what your <laughs> Dr. Ren calls the episode. <laughs> which I, yeah. I desperately had to fight to not steal that from him during the recording because <laughs> that is way too funny. But I did not. I was able to fight it. But I really wanted to call it Angeloni. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what's the answer to our trivia question, Muhammad? Ah, the answer to the trivia question of what, what was the name of uh, Nero's ship in Star Trek 2009? It was the Romulan mining vessel, the Narada. Narada, N-A-R-A-D-A. -A -A. Lots of A's. In mm -hmm. it. And also, the reason I thought of it earlier was because on in the live chat on Sunday, 
<laughs> and Marie and I were joking about what was the species that had the largest oh surface gosh. area to volume ratio. <laughs> that was that. hilarious. It was the, it's the crystalline entity yeah. that like, it has this incredible surface area to volume ratio because it's so branched. Right. But I was talking about this with with my family, and Julie said, "Well, the that ship from 2009 is kind of like that too." I'm like, oh yeah, good point. Mm. Oh. <laughs> so like That's the uh, what's that old uh, mathematical? Uh, uh, anecdote where it's like the coast of England is what? What is that? Oh, I don't remember what you're talking about. I can't. Re- oh, I don't remember the exact word. Uh, yeah, what it's. Well, yeah, the, it's the, the fact about... is, the more you zoom in, the the longer the coastline is, right? So yeah, you, it'll never end. Like it just never depends end, yeah. on how far you zoom in. It's just going to keep growing in in overall uh, length. Yeah, there's some like term for what that is, and I forget what it's called. I forget too, but I remember what you're talking about. Damn it. It's fun. Uh, So Glenn (laughs) Iverson, Chuck A., Lucia, and Dave Gregory got the Narada. Good job, everybody. Good job. Uh, And uh, Rose Kirby said, Anne-Marie, stop picking on Ryan. Uh, No, she didn't, but she (laughs) said, hey, see y'all later. (laughs) See you, Rose Kirby. Uh, that's it. The uh, poll, the final poll was uh, what everybody liked least about the Kelvin movies. 3% said too confusing. 18% said the Beastie Boys. 37% said lens flare. Wow, it's that bad, huh? And 40% agreed with you, Peter. Contrived action sequences. Uh, that's it. Uh Melissa Longo, where can everybody find you online? Um, at Melissa Longo, M-A-L-I-S-S-A Longo on social media and the introvertedrepublic.com. Just like this. Mm-hmm. And more. And more. Yes. And more. What about, <laughs> what about you, Muhammad Noor? Where can everybody find you? Uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Mafnor, M-A-F like Frank, N like November, O-O-R, or on YouTube is Biotreki, B-I-O-T-R-E-K-K-I-E. Uh, Dr. Anne-Marie Siegel, what about you? Um, at Anne-Marie Siegel 1. Oh, Sorry, I'm just putting in easy. the name of Peter's podcast so I'm ready for his. Nice. Uh, Peter, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, Peter underscore Holmes. That's H O L M S and one one three eight. After that, so it's Peter Ooh. underscore Holmes one one three eight. One one and on Trexpert's briefing room too. And also, uh, yes, uh, biweekly I'm on the Trexpert's briefing room podcast. Uh, if you want to hear even more about Star Trek, you come on over there. Um, we uh, have some fun episodes coming up. We tend to focus on screenwriting, but we also uh, talk about all sorts Ooh. of other, other uh, fun stuff about Star Trek as well. So, Is the 1138 THX? It is indeed, yes. Wow, good nerd <laughs> stuff. A bit of a, bit of a Star, Star Wars <laughs> good job. Wow, this uh, is so 1337. <laughs> uh, and everybody, you can find me at Ryan T.G. Husk on Twitter. That's at Ryan T.G. Husk or at Falling Tower, the seventh <laughs> rule or uh, Virtual Trek on, uh, on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. And as Melissa is pointing out, absolutely, you can find me on that <laughs> shirt right there. No, but uh, Star Trek and Chill, check it out. You can get your very own Neelix and Chill shirt. Thanks so much for wearing that. Melissa and Anne Marie as well. Oh, look at his legs. <laughs> what? Look at it. It's hard legs. They're so cute. He's got I swear. Legs. <laughs> we got to go. But when we were when we were working with JJ Lendl to get these legs and feet right, I was thinking. I think JJ is going to think I'm I'm like into toes or something because I was like. Yeah. Can you feet. just a lot of feet involved? The, feet. the toes seem a little lo- can you just and I'm like, this guy's thinking right now, God, Ryan He's is about really to block me. <laughs> I, know, I, just, I just I don't know. Anyway, we better go. Uh thanks very much, Peter. This has been a lot of fun. And Thank everybody you. at home, we'll see you soon. Hey, ZZ's in the live chat. Good to see you. Uh everybody yeah. else, we'll see you next time. And until then, remember if you are into foot talk. Put it on the main viewer.